Why this experiment on planet Earth? What is the meaning? Why did people come to this world? Why so much suffering? How did it happen that many are ready to call God an evil stepmother? Workers of light, all who read or listen to these lines, you should know more about the great experiment. And this conversation is a very important step in understanding what is happening. Without knowledge about our joint work, about our goals, it is impossible to understand the answers to the questions that worry human hearts. The stage of the great game, which I am talking about now, began not a hundred thousand years ago, a little earlier, five million years ago. It was then that the process that people sometimes call the Lucifer Rebellion was initiated in your space-time. Of course, you already understood. There was no rebellion. It was then that our great experiment began in this universe, in the dimension in which you are now. Our joint work with you has begun. Work on mastering the four-dimensional world in this universe. I am now talking about our thirteen-dimensional universe, the one of which we are the creators and inhabitants. Despite the boundless possibilities of light, one can conditionally speak of limitations, as of the specifics of the purposes of universes and the tasks that follow from them. Understand, my dears, all the concepts that I can operate with cannot be accepted by the human consciousness. And here we have to talk about limitations for temporarily limited their eye angels. Forgive me for the pun, my dears, but we strive to expand your consciousness and to ensure that you have an increasingly complete picture of what is happening, not only on the planet, not only in our galaxy, but throughout the universe. So we conditionally say that our universe has limitations. In fact, we know that we are talking about a huge, endless set of abilities, rather even combinations of abilities of a universal nature. Let's note, in our universe, beings are able to live in 13 dimensions, and there are a huge number of interdimensional worlds, that is, between the fourth and fifth dimensions, there are worlds that can be mathematically represented as 4.1 or 4.2, and so on. But there are 13 main dimensions, more precisely even 12 plus 1, because one dimension stands alone. Later I will tell you about its structure and features, about its purpose. For now, let's talk about 12 dimensions. Each dimension has its own octaves of being, the range of vibrations. This range can consist of seven main and five additional notes. Yes, like in music. Only unlike a melody, each dimension has its own set of main and additional notes and cannot use other notes of the universe. In addition, the vibration of notes is carried out at its own frequency level. Your world plays on three main and one additional note. This is the world of four notes or four mers, length, height, width, and time, note by SK vibrating on your e-frequency. The goal of the great experiment is to create a creature capable of mastering all the notes of all twelve dimensions of our universe, and not only to master but also to learn to create new notes, new melodies, new symphonies of being. This is the goal of the great experiment, and you, my dears, are the participants of this experiment. You have come to this world to learn to master the notes of this, your four-dimensional world, to learn to create on this level, and you are already creating. You are creating your families, your countries, your civilizations. You are creating art, science, technology. You are creating love, joy, and suffering. Yes, yes, suffering too. Suffering is an inevitable part of the learning process. Through suffering, you learn to distinguish between good and evil, light and darkness, love and hate. You are learning to make choices, and your choices determine your path. The path of light leads to mastery of all the notes of the universe. The path of darkness leads to self-destruction. The choice is yours, my dears. I urge you to choose the path of light, the path of love, joy, and creativity. This is the path that will lead you to the goal of the great experiment, to the creation of a new, more perfect being. I am with you, my dears, always with you. Why this experiment on planet Earth? What is the meaning? Why did people come to this world? Why so much suffering? How did it happen that many are ready to call God an evil stepmother? Light workers. All who read or listen to these lines, you should know more about the great experiment, and this conversation is a very important step in understanding what is happening. Without knowledge about our joint work, about our goals, it is impossible to understand the answers to the questions that worry human hearts. The stage of the great game, which I am talking about now, did not begin 100,000 years ago. A little earlier, 
five million years ago. It was then that the process that people sometimes call the Lucifer Rebellion was initiated in your space-time. Of course, you already understood. There was no rebellion. It was then that our great experiment began in this universe, in the dimension in which you are now. Our joint work with you has begun. Work on mastering the four-dimensional world in this universe. I am now talking about our thirteen-dimensional universe, the one of which we are the creators and inhabitants. Despite the boundless possibilities of light, one can conditionally speak of limitations, as of the specifics of the purposes of universes and the tasks that follow from them. Understand, my dears, all the concepts that I can operate with cannot be accepted by the human consciousness, and here we have to talk about limitations for temporarily limited their I angels. Forgive me for the pun, my dears, but we strive to expand your consciousness and to ensure that you have an increasingly complete picture of what is happening, not only on the planet, not only in our galaxy, but throughout the universe. So we conditionally say that our universe has limitations. In fact, we know that we are talking about a huge, endless set of abilities, rather even combinations of abilities of a universal nature. Let's note, in our universe, beings are able to live in 13 dimensions, and there are a huge number of interdimensional worlds. That is, between the fourth and fifth dimensions, there are worlds that can be mathematically represented as 4.1 or 4.2, and so on. But there are 13 main dimensions, more precisely even, 12 plus 1, because one dimension stands alone. Later I will tell you about its structure and features, about its purpose. For now, let's talk about 12 dimensions. Each dimension has its own octaves of being, the range of vibrations. This range can consist of seven main and five additional notes. Yes, like in music. Only unlike a melody, each dimension has its own set of main and additional notes and cannot use other notes of the universe. In addition, the vibration of notes is carried out at its own frequency level. Your world plays on three main and one additional note. This is the world of four notes, or four mers, length, height, width, and time, note by SK, vibrating on your frequency. The goal of the great experiment is to create a creature capable of mastering all the notes of all twelve dimensions of our universe, and not only to master, but also to learn to create new notes, new melodies, new symphonies of being. This is the goal of the great experiment. And you, my dears, are the participants of this experiment. You have come to this world to learn to master the notes of this, your four-dimensional world, to learn to create on this level. And you are already creating. You are creating your families, your countries, your civilizations. You are creating art, science, technology. You are creating love, joy, and suffering. Yes, yes, suffering too. Suffering is an inevitable part of the learning process. Through suffering, you learn to distinguish between good and evil, light and darkness, love and hate. You are learning to make choices, and your choices determine your path. The path of light leads to mastery of all the notes of the universe. The path of darkness leads to self-destruction. The choice is yours, my dears. I urge you to choose the path of light, the path of love, joy, and creativity. This is the path that will lead you to the goal of the great experiment, to the creation of a new, more perfect being. I am with you, my dears, always with you. Imagine that in a 16-dimensional universe, ordinary people already become archangels, and even mollusks in the ocean get the ability to get rid of suffering if they understand that they no longer need this suffering. An increase in dimensions is one of the changes. In fact, they are more global in nature. Simply human beings should know that they, as part of the family of light, are initially engaged in the implementation of this great task. And our great experiment is an important step, and not just an important one, but the final stage of the work that we have been doing together for five million years, so that the universe changes its spiritual basis, so that the entire universe expands its consciousness, expands multidimensionally, giving birth to a new universe. And this is billions and billions of stars, planets, civilizations, billions and billions of new forms of life. If a baby is born in a human family, a healthy baby, so beloved and long-awaited, is it happiness for you? Can it be called a great holiday for your family, for moms and dads, grandparents, for brothers and sisters? And here, a new universe is born with billions and billions of lives. Can we talk about the great holiday for the family of light? 
Can we talk about happiness for the family of light? Can we talk about the responsible, solemn moment that everyone is waiting for with bated breath? What do you think? And imagine the energy of the family of light, its efforts, its great creativity as the Great Pyramid, the Great Interspatial Pyramid, the tip of which grows into a new world, into that very universe. At the very top of this pyramid are those who are ready to step into a new universe. No, it's not you yet, human beings. I am talking about other angels who now stand in awe before the portal to a new life. Let's call them divine seraphims. Yes, they stand before that magic portal which shimmers with fantastic colors, where wonderful music sounds like a multidimensional perfect harmony, revealing the notes of all dimensions and octaves. There are not enough human words of all languages of the world to convey the picture that I am telling you about. It is divinely magnificent, very, very majestic. But the portal is not yet open. The divine seraphim seem to have frozen in anticipation of a special code a set of mysterious symbols, not yet created by the family of light of our universe. These symbols are multidimensional. Masters of light create them throughout the universe, each performing their tasks in their own way. You are not just among these masters. You are at the polar point of this portal, at the base of the pyramid. Do you guess what I'm talking about? Yes, Earth is the energy basis of the great universal pyramid, without which a new universe cannot be born. You and the planet are a multi-dimensional code symbol, the activation of which will allow launching a giant portal, but you, your world, also an important part of the matrix of the new born universe. That's it, my friends. No more and no less. What? Cryon. We didn't hear wrong? Our world, full of suffering, will move to a new universe. We didn't hear wrong. Understand, my dears. The new universe is new boundless possibilities including the birth of worlds in dense matter. Imagine that you become teachers of those who decide to go into the dense world. Without the experience and knowledge of passing through dense matter, this is impossible, and where it is required, you will be able to teach how to live without evil and suffering. But this is just one of the reasons why experience of passing through dense worlds is necessary. But we no longer have the strength to endure. We are very tired. I hear the words of many. We no longer believe in the best, tired of words, tired of conflicting information. From the fact that the new era will come, it is unknown when. And will it come at all? We were so waiting for 2012, we thought. That's it. The door will open and we will enter a new, magical world. And then we were told, don't expect too much from 2012. Is this normal at all? How much longer can we wait? The mollusk's heart hurts. It may not be able to withstand it. What do you think my answer is? My dears, will I calm you down, persuade you? Say, wait a little longer. There is very little left. No. Cryon's teachings have been available to a wide audience for over. It is only part of your lesson, which you can already part with. We talked about the ability to compassionate. It's important. Now it's time to learn to live in joy. The family of light tells you about joy as an integral part of your life. You are able to live and create a new reality now bringing more and more joy into your life, into the lives of those around you. Understand, in suffering, it is impossible to create a beautiful reality where it is good for everyone to live. It is impossible. How to go from suffering to joy? Isn't this what the modern teaching of the family of light is about, which comes to you through different sources? Be careful. There are many lessons given. It's time to apply them in practice and change your life for the better. No, your life is your choice. Suffering and the absence of joy in your life is a signal for you. Which one? Crayon's answer. You are still not communicating with your higher self. The one who has started such communication will certainly find a path that leads to a decrease in suffering and an increase in joy. Lightworkers, awakening souls. This is very important to understand. Your communication with the spirit through the higher self is a prerequisite for the transition to a better reality. And if you continue to suffer, if you experience many negative feelings, do not shift responsibility for this to the world or other people. By doing so, you deprive yourself of the abilities of the Creator. Even if you have received a lot of spiritual knowledge, this does not mean that your ego is weak, and it, controlling consciousness and body, 
leads to a position of egocentrism and, as a result, to suffering and negative energy. Start communicating with your higher self, communicate with your support group, talk mentally with your mentors, and the result will not be long in coming, my dears. Trust. Trust your higher self. Move from knowledge to its practical application. This is very important now, my beloved, very important. Ah, if you only knew how the mentors are waiting for active communication from you, how they want to merge with you, overcoming the obstacles of the veil. You say that love cannot do what happens on earth in this world, meaning the evil, suffering, violence that has been created. Of course it can't. Love is not capable of creating evil and suffering. Yes, it was created by human beings without love. This is what can happen in worlds where there is little, very little love. But at the same time I answer, yes, love can become the cause of this. Because it was love that brought you to this world. Without love, angels from the great central sun would never have made the decision to leave their divine self and put on the guise of human beings coming to this world and to this planet of free choice. And you also keep asking, the great transition, what will it be like? Will there be three days of darkness? Will there be a leap? Will there be memory loss and cataclysms and multimeter waves that will sweep across the continents, sweeping away all dwellings on their way? Will this happen? Friends, it's time not just to believe that you are the creators of your reality. You must know this. This knowledge is in your hearts, in your deep memory, in your multidimensional DNA layers. And among human beings, there are those who put this knowledge into practice. And you will meet such people in your life if you yourself go the way of the Creator. I can only once again state that your higher selves this time do not choose the option of development of events when cataclysms interrupt the development of civilization. Because you already have this experience. You will no longer have three days of darkness because the angels from the great central sun have already made such a transition. Multimeter waves will not flood the continents because there is no need for this. There is no need to jump into the fifth dimension, and even more so, to lose your memory. The great transition which we are all talking about is your creation, your and only your path which you choose each time, each of you. And reality is directed to the channel where the collective energy of the light workers is directed, based on the energy of all higher selves of human beings, angels from the great central sun. But why are we so different then, Cryon? Why do we have such different ideas about the transition? Oh, really? Are they really that different? Just understand, we are not talking about expressed thoughts, not about thoughts embodied in words, but about your true intentions. Someone talks about three days of darkness, and at the same time his heart sinks from terrible sensations. Someone talks about a jump, and he himself inside his self only dreams that nothing will change so quickly. Someone talks about cataclysms, and he is so afraid of earthquakes that he is ready to change his place of residence just so as not to meet with these natural events. And actually, why? I ask. Why meet with strong cataclysms if there is no desire and need? Why plunge into darkness and lose memory if there is another way now? Why erase everything and start over if we have this experience too? Why divide into them and us if you know in the depths of your heart this is duality that works. And if you want someone to be punished so that someone remains in the lower world and you go further, do you want retribution? Then the question, do you, spirit, want to punish others? Or does your ego, born and raised in a world where there is so little love, want revenge? So creativity co-creation, free choice of those who learn to build new universes. Matter is only a building material that, becoming spiritualized, turns into the basis of new worlds. Now there is no road that someone has built for you. There is no path that someone will show you. There are only options that are thrown to you by deep memory. And there are also those who are allowed to give conflicting information so that you have something to choose from. And this is part of the difficult game Planet of Free Choice, the rules of which you have set yourself. And here, yes, I hear, few dare to ask the question, Cryon, but who can change the rules of the game? Can we start playing by new rules ourselves? My answer, what do you think? Meaningful smile of Cryon. And in response, I ask you, can you change the rules? Or 
Are you ready to change the rules? Or, have you decided to change the rules? Oh, my partner already knows about this. Although he also believed and believes with difficulty, smile of cryon, five and a half thousand years ago, the rules have changed. Someone suddenly intervened in the course of the great experiment and changed the rules. And for some time, the light workers on the planet played according to other different from the previous rules. Maybe now it's better not to wait for someone, even if very, very spiritually high, very wise, very loving, very creative, very capable, to suddenly offer these new rules. After all, you already have this experience of passing the line. Cryon, and what experience do we not have? A question worthy of human beings. The answer of Cryon is, You know this. You understand a lot. The angels from the great central sun do not have the experience of creation precisely from that level of density of immersion in matter in which human beings are now. There is no experience of creation precisely from the point from which you are now taking off. There is no experience of creation with the artifacts that you possess. Do not forget that you are now yourself a part of that matter into which you came. You are the very foundation that performs both the role of builders at the same time. That's the peculiarity. Builders and building material, one whole. Agree. It is probably not easy for a builder to become an ordinary brick while remaining alive, preserving consciousness. But it is also not easy for a construction brick to suddenly realize that he is actually a builder, and not only a builder, but an architect. The great architect who once created the project. Ah, Cryon, so there is a construction plan after all? So you don't know it? And if I answer, the plan is a great secret which is behind the veil even for those who are behind the veil, smile of Cryon. Sorry for another pun. The great plan in all its magnificence is not known even to the essences that you call planetary logos and even solar logos will not claim to know the entire great plan. And at the same time, you know it, dear human beings. No, of course, not the entire great plan, but that part of it that you are entrusted to fulfill. And this is your secret, which you yourself learn. Therefore, the truth will not come from outside. Truth will be born and created inside human beings, inside their hearts, when they ignite with the true fire of cosmic universal creativity. And these hearts will turn into an unusual sun when, like an energy Mobius strip, your reality will turn into a new reality. Cry on, dear, but why are we so divided? For what? If we are all angels, then why do some serve in temples while others kill people? Why do some selflessly create good while others only fill their pockets? Some love while the goal of others is only violence. And you yourself say that there are still so few of us light workers in this world. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Asterisk, asterisk. So the rest are not angels after all? Or angels? I will formulate your question differently. Are the absolute majority of people angels from the great central sun? Answer, yes. Now, attention. The exceptions are robotized entities. There are no more than 0.1% one-tenth of a percent of the total number of earthlings, that is no more than six million. At the request of my partner, I am giving the exact figure at the time of this information being transmitted, five, six, two, three, four, five, seven robotic entities. So many of these entities are currently on the planet Earth. They live among people and are externally indistinguishable. The robotic entities include those who form the basis of the world management team, the planet's shadow government. Aliens in human form. There are not many of them. They are admitted by the Galactic Spiritual Government, the Federation of Free Worlds, and the Confederation of Planets of our Galaxy. They were not born, incarnated, or possessed the bodies of people. They arrived on the planet. They have their own bodies, either artificially created, similar to human bodies, or very similar to human ones. These aliens are your genetic and spiritual relatives. They are simply helpers and researchers. Their hearts are ruled by love. They will never be able to do any harm to people under any circumstances. Here is the exact figure of their presence. 324787 representatives, according to information as of February 1st, 11, note by SK. The rest are all angels from the great central sun. That is you, my dear ones, and there is no one else of intelligent beings in this your dimension. I mean on the Earth's surface, on land, because in the seas and oceans there are still dolphins and whales. 
the ancient intelligent beings of this planet, then why such a division? Why are there saints and sinners, creators and destroyers? Why do the hearts of some are ruled by fear and ego, while in the hearts of others the flowers of true love have blossomed? Yes, although you are all angels, there exists something that can conventionally be called division. There are those who came earlier into this dense world. They have more experience of incarnations, a significantly larger number of incarnations precisely in this four-dimensional world. And there are those who have very little experience of incarnations in the physical, dense world. And on the planet, Earth in particular, the so-called old souls, great experience of incarnations in the material world, make up a minority. They are 2-3% of the total number of people. Medium souls, 32.4%. Young souls, 65.3%. This division is very conditional, but it reflects the general picture. Experienced lightworkers, experienced metaphysicians have long known about the existence of old, medium, and young souls. Only the percentage ratio was different, but the essence of the information has always remained the same. There are most young souls on the planet, about two-thirds. Almost a third are medium souls, and only a small part are old souls. Among the lightworkers, there are not only old souls— there are young and middle souls who make up, however, no more than one-tenth of a percent of all light workers. Unfortunately, even old souls have not yet all awakened from the sleep of the material world and embarked on active spiritual work. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Alas, this is true. Although the veil is rising, it still remains. Duality is still strong. Why are there so many angels from the great central sun on earth right now? because together you possess the quantity and quality of love energy to use the results of the great experiment and make the great transition. Cry on, but why did some come earlier and others later? Also a significant question. The energy of the detachment that goes ahead is enough to wake up the rest. Smile of cry on. And most importantly, there is one more reason for the existence of old and younger souls. The question here is not only about expediency, well, imagine, my dears, if I answered you with a human example. Say, it's like with the military. First, the quartermasters come, they prepare tents for living, build the necessary structures, and then the entire military unit comes and exercises begin. No, now it's not about such expediency. You came to the dense world on different waves of energy, although from the same world, great central sun, and you came here in different ways, through different worlds and planets. In you, in your multidimensional genomes, the experience of the entire galaxy is concentrated, including the one that human beings call negative, negative. Why is it needed? Why is it necessary? And if I say that in the new universe we will go through such worlds and you will need this experience? Even if only to become teachers, not enough for a complete answer? Then I will add that duality is the spark that should ignite the engine of the transition, Without the merger of negative and positive experience, we will not be able to use the results of our experiment to fold realities and dimensions for the birth of new worlds. We just need to feel that the whole experiment is your decision, your difficult and honorable work. You know about it. This knowledge is in your hearts, and unparalleled experience and unique abilities are in your multidimensional genome. All angels from the great central sun came here, to this planet, to this world of their own free will as authors and participants in the great experiment. And they became human beings. For five million years, the Earth has been passing lessons of life and development in the four-dimensional world. And into this world, you, angels from the great central sun, could only come, only leaving your divine self. Understand the quantumity of the situation. Please let me know if you have any other questions. If you had brought with you your divine self, then this world would immediately cease to be a world of dense matter and the fourth dimension, smile of cryon. Not clear? The presence of your divine self can instantly transform the dense world into a higher vibration. But in such a world, it is no longer possible to get lessons of free choice, and the whole experiment would simply lose its meaning. My dear ones, behind the veil there is no such concept as evil. We, and you, when you are here, have no negative. The family of light does not need mollusks that would process negative energy, turning it into pearls. Such do not exist. But there are those, 
angels of the family of light who came to the dense world and said, We will master it and change it. We will get new lessons and the necessary experience, and at the same time, we will solve the most important task for the galaxy and the entire universe. Do you feel the difference now between a mollusk in the ocean and an angel from the great central sun? Very kind, long smile of cryon. The mollusk waits for the world to change for the better. The angel from the great central sun understands who he is and begins to change himself and change the world for the better. The special feature of this planet is also in the fact that it has concentrated all the experience of the galaxy in a special way. Therefore, it is not by chance that this name, Galactic Library, it is familiar to many. You have already heard about it. You know, the crystalline field of the planet is a unique galactic Akashic Chronicle, which all these five million years were collected by the entire galactic family of light and carefully stored, developed, However, Earth is not just a galactic library, and not just a part of the Akashic Records. It is a kind of crystalline engine for the galactic ascension process, for the ascension of our entire galaxy, and our galaxy Milky Way, and is the very portal path, the point of intersection of the universal Moebius Strip. It is here, at this point in space-time, that the dimensions turn out their self and the flow of life prana exhales life into a new, other-dimensional universe, which we are giving birth to, and new worlds will rush there, which are already being created somewhere out there, at a distance of 12 billion light-years from here. I told you about their creation earlier. Information was given through Lee Carroll, note by S.K. When the shift of dimensions begins, something incredible will happen from the point of view of human beings. Those distant created worlds and our world will merge and become one. Well, a simple example. We take a tape from one end and from the other. The length of this tape is 12 billion light years, smile of cryon. On one edge, you on the other, the worlds that are being created, we put both edges together. And now the universal Moebius strip is ready. Yes, we are now really on the edge of the dimension tape. But this edge will become the central point. That is what point? Now the heart of the one who receives this information sank. He understood what it was about. Remember the lines of the very great call that we gave you back in the middle of the last century? From the point of light that in the mind of God let light stream into the hearts of people. May light descend upon earth. The point of light in the mind of God is the great central sun from where you came. This is the thirteenth dimension which exists as if in a folded, archived form. It's not easy to get there. It's a kind of umbilical cord that connects our universe, daughter-son universe, with our parent universe, father-mother universe. You plunged into the material world from very high aspects of being. You did a great job here. And now, when the tape of measurements connects, it is here on this planet that will happen. We smile together. The partner admits that it is difficult to find words, and I don't want to whisper banal epithets to him. Incredible, wonderful, magical. There are many synonyms, but there is no exact definition. This happens once in the life of one universe, the four dimensional world at the point which we call the Moebius effect point, does not simply pass into a higher fifth dimension, but becomes a new point of light in the mind of God, or again turns into the great central sun, acquires all the qualities of the great central sun and people immediately become who they really are, bypassing the long road of return along the spiral of light. How do you like this scenario, my dears? What is your peculiarity? Many, many have heard, if only by hearsay, is uh, they have already whispered to you about it, and they spoke openly. You are masters of working with dimensions. You came up with this thing with a giant, wise, super-magical jump transformation from the fourth dimension to the thirteenth and immediately to the new universe, and immediately together with new ready worlds. The fourth dimension, the dense energy of your world, is the energy that is necessary for the start and jump transformation. I will say, yes, considered even the option of starting from the three-dimensional world. But everyone was convinced that this is not possible yet. After all, even in the four-dimensional world, you still cannot remember who you are and why you are here. And what would it be like for angels to jump from the three-dimensional world? 
To build the worlds that we will take with us to the new universe, we need the energy and experience of this four-dimensional world. What about the fifth dimension, which has been talked about so much? Yes, yes, there will be a transition to the fifth dimension. I will reveal a secret. There will be the implementation of a corridor on the principle of there and back. There will also be collective ascensions. Oh, friends, there's a lot of magnificent and fascinating things ahead. And now here is the question that I have not forgotten. Here it is. Could not everything have been done without pain and suffering? There is a softer option for the development of events. Could not the Creator, the great family of light, choose another option? Here is a question that can knock you down. Well, I answer. There is another original feature of our universe. In the newly created dense reality, there is initially no love. In inanimate matter, there is no love. At first we come, the family of light, and together with us, gradually, remember God works slowly, love is born, and moreover, you, you, the angels from the great central sun, have made the decision to accelerate the process many times over, and to make it unusual, the vast majority of worlds do not have freedom of choice. In them, there is a gradual evolution of the spirit under the control of the family of light, which grows this spirit in matter like a caring gardener grows a beloved plant in the garden, or rather, even, in a greenhouse with artificially created conditions. The angels from the great central sun, on the other hand, evolve themselves. Well, this can be likened to a person who lifts his body into the air by his hair, crayons smile. But nevertheless, it is so. You yourself come out of the darkness of matter and yourself grow your spirit, and the family of light had no knowledge whether you would be able to do it or not. But you are volunteers. You made the decision and carried out your plan. You left your higher self and stepped into the matter of this world with great love and pure intention. And now you remember who you are, and you manifest to the whole universe. The experiment was successful. We are leaving this dense matter. It's time to move on. And what's next? I've already told you. I can only add to what has been said that you are the beings in the universe who are capable of carrying out the great experiment. This is recorded in the Akashic records of the previous universe, and some people knew about it. Crayon smile. Therefore, no one interfered with your decision to go into a world without love and to achieve that love would begin to revive and create a new world here. I can still hear questions. For example, can the division of humanity be made only by the experience of incarnations? Oh, these human beings, you would divide everything, Crayon's friendly irony. But it's time to unite. I will also answer this question. Of course, there are also peculiarities of passing through the dense world and some specifics of star classes, peculiarities of training of those or other souls and even so-called star karma. Yes, star karma exists. There is karma of dense worlds, karma of other planets. But all this does not work on people now. No, no, and no. Now we can only talk about earthly karmic debts and about the earthly karma of humanity. And here we will start talking about the problem for which, in fact, I started today's conversation. This is very important, my friends. Crayon asks you to focus now at the center of attention, the karma of humanity. Here are some additional points to consider. The translation uses American English spelling and grammar conventions. The tone of the translation is informal and conversational, matching the tone of the original text. The translation is clear and easy to understand for an American audience. The translation accurately conveys the meaning of the original text, the karma of humanity. We recently talked about the karma of individual human beings, and we learned that a light worker who has taken responsibility for his own life and everything that happens on the planet can neutralize his entire karmic burden. This is truly so. I am pleased to inform you, my sons, that there are more and more of you who, expanding your consciousness, are thinking about the karma of human civilization. And they ask a question that naturally arises, is it possible to neutralize the karma of all humanity?